Amen. I come seeking fruit. Isaiah chapter. I've given you two points in, in this camp so far. Just two. I come seeking fruit. And then number two. That is um, from the I come seeking fruit. I come seeking fruit from the earth. Isn't it? And now in Isaiah. Chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amos. Which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth its owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Amen. Amen. Now, it says, the Lord has spoken in verse 2. I have nourished and brought up children. I have nourished and brought up children. And what have they done? They have rebelled against me. And then he said, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel does not know, and my people do not consider. So what he's saying is that even an ox knows that this is his owner, and that he has to behave carefully with his owner. Now, wild animals don't know that. They are very dangerous. So you can feed a tiger diligently every day. If we watch the Yamusukro documentary, you see the one who fed the crocodiles for years, one day they just ate him. And the video of them eating him is in the Yamusukro video, which we have. If, how many have, have not watched it? You've not watched it. Yeah. If we get a chance, if we have time, if there's free time. But the Bible, the ox knows his owner. The ass knows his master. And knows that you owe some duty and some kindness or some responsibility towards your owner. Now, when you deal with God, you must know that he has a certain expectation. You see, and that is what people don't realize, that wild animals don't think. I, don't, I subscribe to joking with animals, wild animals. These type of people will be playing, playing with the snake, playing with this, playing with me. I personally, I don't, I don't support that kind of thing. You know? <laughs> because they, they are not faithful animals. They are not loyal. They don't remember the goodness you have shown to them. You get it? And if you don't take care, they can turn on you. And they can turn against you. Yes. So, what God is saying is that I come to you having an expectation. There is that expectation of God from his Christians. And if you are a wild animal without any sense of loyalty, faithfulness, or even sense of obligation, duty, that I owe this to God for what he has done for me. Even you owe it to yourself. You have people that have come to the camp who are in their rooms. I mean, I ask yourself why you would come to this camp and be in your room now. I mean, you owe to yourself having come all the way here not to spend 
this last few minutes sleeping or resting or doing something else. You owe to yourself. Why did you come? Why, why are you here? If we are watching a video, you ask yourself, why, why are you on your phone? Why are you doing something else? You owe it to yourself. You don't have such a big screen at home. What are you thinking about? Why are you sleeping? Why are you angry on your honeymoon? Number three or number four, I come seeking fruit from my vineyard. God is looking for fruit from his vineyard. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1. Now will I sing a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. And planted it with the choicest vine. And built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. But it brought forth wild grapes. And now all inhabitants of Jerusalem. And men of Judah. I judge, pray you. Between, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard than I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Why should my vineyard give me wild grapes? Now go at two and I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof and it shall be eaten. I will break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. I will lay it waste and it shall not be pruned nor digged. And there shall come up briars and thorns. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. What else could be done to you and for you? So God is here telling us that, look, we are his vineyard. And he says, I came and I looked in verse 2. I, he looked. He looked. He looked, looked with expectation. It's like getting married, you enter the kitchen and you go to the kitchen, you look with expectation for food and there's nothing. Two boys have, have gotten married who know nothing. <laughs> oh, it's dinner time. And you look and there's nothing. You looked at it, should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Wow. wow. So I, I just want to change your perspective of Christianity. If you think God is not looking for something from you, then you don't know God. Amen. Amen. Then you don't know. Those who are looking for seats, there's a seat here, there's a seat here, there's a seat there, there's seats. Okay? If you have a seat by you, lift your hand. There's people don't have seats. Raise your hand. All these people don't have all these people have seats by them. Just maybe shift or, or something. If you don't have a seat, if you have an empty seat by you, lift your hand, please. Seats here, seats there, seats there, seats there, many seats. There's one there. Seats. You, you have a seat by you. Lift your hand, please. So, they were there. There's one, two, three, four. Here. Now, look at verse 3. Over here, quickly, raise your hand. You have a seat. One here. Just raise your hand up high and then we see. Don't talk. Just lift your hand up high. Look here. Quickly. 
Now, judge between me and my vineyard. Verse 4. This is what God can do when you are not going to give him the grapes that he's expecting. All right? What more could have been done? Verse 5. This is what I will do. Number one, I will take away the hedge. Yes, the hedge. There is a hedge that keeps you from dying. And it shall be eaten up. Number two, put it back please. I will break down the wall. There is a wall around you. Maybe you can't see, but you know, since you don't appreciate certain things, it's usually when it's taken away that you appreciate it. It's true. Yes. You know, when we were returning from Uganda, I had a call to pass to see the president. And I said to them, and it means I have to go the next day. I have to go the next day uh, back home. And I said, no, I want to go today. But the next day was Ethiopian Airways crash that happened. The, what do you call it? And the way the flights were, I could have been connected to that flight. But anyway, the next day, the rest of our team from Healing Jesus were flying out from uh, Addis Ababa. And they were on the runway. They, they, they were on the runway. And the plane that crashed was the one in front. It was one, two. Yeah. Yeah. They were all lined up there. If you go, Addis Ababa Airport is like, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's a massive airport with many, 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 many aircraft. It's, it's like Heathrow Airport or something. It's an amazing place. And they were on the runway. When this plane took off, then after a few minutes, I think there was some problem. So they asked them to, to, to wait. So they were waiting. They were waiting to take off. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on a plane that is behind a plane that is going to crash, full of people just like you. A lot of people going for a UN meeting in, 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 uh, in where? Wherever. In Kenya. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you know, I was considering going through Kenya. So it was one of my considerations. So in the morning, I, I, I saw Ethiopia Airways crash. There are many things we take for granted, but that's how it is. When you, when, when you are really some way, it's when you take things for granted. It's the nastiest kind of thing to have is people who take things for granted, things that are done for them. And they don't know what is being done for them. It's true. You don't know what is being done for you. Yeah. And I will, I will break the wall. And you will die. Yeah. I'll break it, you die. And the next one, verse 6, I will lay it waste. I will not be pruned nor dig. You see, I'm pruning. Right now, you are being pruned. Yeah. God said, okay, I'll leave you to not be pruned and not be digged. Pruning and digging will stop. You come to church and you are hearing a message and the message is firing you up or even not so pleasant. And God is pruning you. How do you come? Do you want to come to church and just only hear praises? Are you God that we have to praise you? We have to worship you, say nice things to you. And then I will command the clouds that they shouldn't water you again. Huh? Why? Because. Because 
God came looking in your direction for something. And you said, oh, who does he think he is? It's true. It's true. One day I was speaking to, uh, uh, what do you call it, from in a country. And uh, he was describing an accident that he said that he was sitting in the dri assistant driver's seat. There's a driver and then the assistant. And suddenly a black bean entered the car. Yes. A dark person entered the car and held the steering wheel and turned the steering wheel to face the oncoming car. Yes. Describe it to me. And the car went for a headlong crash. And whatever else happened, death, injury, car doors opened, people came out, and so on. Yeah. And he described it. He said, somebody entered the car. We were not going fast. He said we were not going fast. And then they turned the car this way and went. So God says, I did all this for you. But you see, most of the things God does for us, they are the things that you can't see that he's doing for you. So they are the kind of things that you take for granted until it is not there. If I was not alive, you would be begging, say, if only he would come and just have a camp with us and tell us something. If only he would play a video for us. The video that you may be sleeping whilst we are watching or you'll be doing something else. You'll say, if we could have even have just one video. Oh, yes. Or oh, one song. If we could just have one song. It's true. Or if we could have somebody to sing for us. Or sing to us. We would love so Sorry. But most of the time, we don't, we don't realize. You see, there are, there are things, you may not have that experience, but there are things that let you see. A sister was telling me a story the other day. They were racing in a, in a car. Racing, they were, they were doing races. Yes. One car was a Mercedes Benz. One was an Audi. One was a master. And one was what? What was the last one? A pickup. Toyota pickup. Are you listening to my listen to my story? One was a Toyota pickup. So four car one Audi, one Benz, one Mazda, and a Toyota. And they were, they didn't know each other. They just, isn't it? They, they didn't know each other. They just met on the road. But the road, the road is, the road is flat. Because it's a road, it's a road through the desert. And when, you say, when I say the desert, like, it's not real desert, but like, it is flat. And there's not much trees or anything. And they were going was it a race? A fun race. Yes. It was a fun race. The driver of one of the cars is here. The driver of the Mazda is here. So they were now driving between 150 and 200 kilometers per hour, isn't it? Sit down, I'll introduce them to the driver of the Mazda. Between 150 and 200 
kilometers per hour. That is what do you what do you, what is that in miles? Science students, come on, help us. You know the arts guys don't know much. Ninety to one twenty. Is that fast in your world? Uh, one fifty. Many cars will start vibrating from one forty. They will be vibrating. 100 to 120 miles per hour. And they were, they didn't know. So you are in the Mercedes, I don't know you. You are in the Audi, I don't know. You are in the Toyota, you are in the Mazda, I don't know. And then they started to see whose car. Was it to see whose car is fastest? To see whose car is fastest. Yeah. Are you listening to my story? Yes. I'm talking about God made hedges in the wall. Then, suddenly, the police, the police came, isn't it? Yes. Out of the bush came the police. Now, this is a country with the highest accident rates in the world, the whole world. So out, because of, you see, the way the road flat, there's no mountain, it's just flat. So out of the bush came the police. And the police arrested this one. Come. <laughs> this, this little girl who was a Formula One driver. Yes. How, how old were you? I was 20. 20. I was 20. Ready at 20 to do anything. Yes. Now, the police, you, you said the police should give you a student, what? It should allow you. They stopped me and they gave me a price, but the price was too high. So I asked them, can you give me a student price for the ticket? <laughs> student? She, she asked for a student price. For the ticket. Ribbit. From the police. Are you listening to my story? Are you listening to my story? Yes. And what did the policeman say? They asked me, were you driving student speed? I asked him whether she was driving a student speed. She was angry because she had been selected, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Out of the team. Out of everybody we were playing with, they chose me. To and see. you were like overtaking. And to my see. turn, your turn. Okay, my turn, your turn. Okay, I'll lead. Okay, you lead. I'll lead, you lead. Yeah. And then sometimes you would go on the, the lane and then you just, because we only have one to go, one to come back. Sometimes you just go and just see the who's two. going faster. Who can go faster. So you were angry with God or you were angry with... Were you angry with God that you were being captured or angry yes, with the police? Yes, I was wondering. Uh, I was just driving and then you stopped me to yeah. give me a whole ticket. Yeah. Are you listening? Now, when she finished with the police, the ticket, and then she continued. As she was going, she saw... What did you see? Smoke or dust? Dust. Dust. <laughs> dust. And when she went to the dust, all the cars that were racing, all of them crashed, no. mangled. No. Yes. Now, no, I'm talking about what we don't know, what God does. So listen, listen to my story. I've not finished telling you my story. I, I shouldn't tell you the rest of my story. Then, then, so you parked. 
she, I, she packed, I came and I parked. She came and packed all the confusion. Cars. I think somebody was coming. They didn't see. Yeah, no, they didn't see. They that. didn't see. All the cars crashed over there. She got out of her car. Isn't it? Yes, Daddy. Then she went to the Mercedes. Yes, Daddy. The, mes- the man in the Mercedes, what has happened to him? The Mercedes was the latest, so he was the passenger and the co-driver. And then his leg was stuck to the, what is it called? The clutch. the under the, of the car. Yeah, the thing that you open. And he couldn't move the chair back because you need the car on to move the new Mercedes back. So the blood stopped flowing. He became blue. He became pale. He became blue. He became pale. He will become blue. She, she, was, she was standing. She, this is the person that she was racing with. And the man turned blue, then he becomes pink. Then he becomes blue, then he becomes pink. Then he becomes blue, then he becomes pink. And what did he say? And he said, ah, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be a part of us. Weren't you the uh, girl driving the master? Weren't you the girl driving the master? He was shocked to see her standing outside. He was so surprised. What are you doing here? And then what did he say? And he said, ah. He, he, the thing is, he was confused, shocked. It's like, why, why, it was a, even, yeah, how, how come we're not here? And, then and he, he said, said he was trying to have. And then he, the thing is, they were drinking and driving. And he said, oh, we were just trying to have fun. That's all he said. We were, we're just fun. trying to have fun. And everybody died. Everybody. On the scene. They died there. Everybody. There were wigs all over the place, bottles of alcohol all there were over what? the place. Wigs. Wigs. And there were ladies too. <laughs> Shh. Listen. 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 Hello? Everybody died. Did they die in front of you? Everybody died. The one died in front of me. That one died. Others just stood dusty. Yes. Everybody gone. Except her. Mm. And we can't find the system. Huh? We can't find the ticket because I tried paying for the ticket, but we can't find it on the system. We didn't find the ticket. So, God, listen. No, I'm explaining to you. God expecting something from you. Now, this man turning blue, turning pink, turning blue, turning pink, right before her, saying we're just trying, he was talking, and he died in front of her. Yes. On 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 the motorway. And God saved a small girl, 20 years old. Today, I wouldn't be surprised if God would turn his head towards her and look at her. I'm, I'm looking for something from you. You know, I saved you. I, I intervened. And I'm looking for something from you. I'm expecting something. Because I, I put a hedge around you. You would have gone. But I put my hedge around you. Long time, we didn't even know who she is. I wouldn't even know who she is. Today, this little one has a church in Cuba. Speaking, She's not from Cuba. She has a church in Cuba. With a lot of them doing swollen Sunday, many things. Police even arresting them and all kind of things. Yes. Yes. Listen, I want you to know there are many things that will happen to you. But usually, we take for granted those things when God spares you from this place. But occasionally he allows you to see. I read a book once which said that when a person has a call of God, usually the person has certain near-death experiences. Wow. Yeah. Usually near-death experiences like it's showing that something, you know, is, is, is expected from you. Yes. How many have been in situations where you realize, no, you could have gone. 
Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You could have, you could have disappeared from this world. And God seemed to have spared you. How many have had a classmate who died and you wonder that, is this person not my classmate? God is expecting from you something. Yes. Many things. Many things. Many things. But this is something. For me, if it was me, I will never forget it for the rest of my life. And he says, what should be done? He said, and he looked towards the vineyard to see. And when he looked, there was nothing. And he said, ah. And he said, judge between us. I made a wall. I made a hedge. I dug it. I dug it up. I pruned it. I did this. I did this. Your own classmate is diagnosed with cancer. Your own friend is dying. Your own whatever is dead. It doesn't mean anything to you. I mean, I, I'm not trying to frighten you, but I'm just saying, look, God does things for us. He, he, he permits us to exist. He permits us to live. But I tell you, if you think he's not ever going to look towards you expecting something, then you don't know who God is. I want you to know that you don't know God. For God, he equally looks towards you with expectation. Yes. You see this large crowd here? Even there are many even American ministries cannot have such a gathering. gathering. Yes. Where's my new friend? Come tell us yourself. What's his name? Stephen. Yeah, come, come tell me. Yeah. Is this a common? Tell us. Tell the people. Not at all. <laughs> this is out of the ordinary. Completely. Well, what are you? What, what, are, what do you do? Are you, are you a carpenter? I mean, tell us. <laughs> I'm in the full-time ministry. I, I married into a ministry family and, I mean, been blessed. And we see miracles and stuff happening here. But this is on another level from what's happening in America now. <laughs> Completely. Why is it on another level? What is the level? Tell us more. We want to understand the levels. It's the Jesus level. <laughs> because Jesus you... level. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tell us, he's explaining the Jesus level. Sit down, sit down. You got a chance to preach. This is a God has opened a door for you. Amen. <laughs> you've taken the Bible, you've read it, and you believed it. And then you went and did it. And then you got the results. That's it. It's simple. Like you said, it's simple. You read it, you believed it, then you went out, did it and got the same results, just like the apostles. And that's Amen. not, that's not that's done it. here. Is it not common? Is it not what everybody's believing? In the States right now, no. In the States? They're believing some pillow gospel. A, a, te a teddy bear, my God, he wants to come and give you a hug. It's soft, he loves you. Everything's going to be all right. No, he's a God of blessing and cursing. You have to choose. You have to serve him. Amen? Amen. Pillow gospel. Pillow gospel. Tell me more about the pillow gospel. Pillow gospel. Sit Where? down and listen to the man. Sit down and listen to the man preaching. It's okay. You can, you can go over here. You can, uh, let me just say this. You can flirt with the devil on the weekend or during the week and then think that God's going to wink his eye and everything's going to be okay. That's the pillow gospel. You can go here. You can flirt with her. You can touch her there. You can watch this. You can click that. Everything's going to be fine. God's just going to turn aside and just going to bless you, and everything's going to be fine. Pillow gospel. Pillow gospel. Softies. I like how y'all put it, softies. I like what I heard. You said it takes a real man to serve God, a hard man to serve God, a strong man to serve God, a strong woman to serve God. Amen? Wow. And that's why I've come here 
so I can receive from people actually doing it. So I can take it back to my house and see what God promised us. Amen? Because he's not done. If you take it and believe his word, he will perform it. Amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God's not done with America, and he's going to use you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah! I thank God for you. You have stirred my faith. You've given me faith. Because I see there is a remnant here in America. Amen? And it's right here. Hallelujah. Thank you. Wow. Hallelujah. That is a blessing. Give him a mighty clap offering. Bless him. Wow. Listen, I believe what the Bible says. God has made a hedge. Me, I never thought would I even be 50 years old. And when I was 50, I said, oh God, wow, surprise. <laughs> I'm still here. I have to replan my computer to carry on. Yes. And you see people, they are so sure of everything. So, oh, you know, when I'm 73, I'll do this. I said, wow. Wow. I, I see it as a grace to be around. Yes. And I see that God has prevented. Not that you are preventing. He has prevented he has prevented things. One day I sat with a man whose birthday was the day after my birthday. Or the day before my birthday or after. Same. Same day, same year. And then he told me something. As he was even describing it, my skin was cringing. I was cringing. I was, what are you describing? He said, I would not be sitting in front of you. Just grace. <laughs> and I look at him. I say, my God. Same year. He was born the same year, the same, the same month, the, the next day, either the day before or the day after. I think the day after. If we are here and we are preaching, better thank God. Amen. What more can be done to my beloved? What else can be done for you? What else can be done for you? What do you want to see? Look at this little one. Preaching better than some of you. Preaching better than some of you. Don't ever look at me with an oblique eye. When you see me appointing these little ones, that's something I have warned you this about the third or fourth time in this meeting. I'm saying. And I'm going to meet all first love. And if you are 25 years old and below, shh, listen, 25 years old and below, and first love, first love church, and 25 years old and below, I'll have a meeting with you after. you to look at any of these people with an eye that is going up and to the left. <laughs> look straight with bright, happy eyes. Amen. Amen. What more can be done to my beloved, my beloved American church? God has given you podcasts. He's given you songs. Even think of the songs. I mean, tell you the truth. Those of you who enjoy, how many enjoy music? How many enjoy good music? You listen to the kind of songs that God has blessed us with. Fantastic songs that keep you alive spiritually. And it's not on either podcast. 
I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know where to get it. And all the churches are singing. You have the music free. Nothing is for sale. Nothing is for sale. No sale anywhere for anything. It's amazing. Listen to me, my friend. God has kept you alive. Your liver, you can press here. One day, if you press here and it becomes hard, it may be your liver. Primary liver cell carcinoma. I don't want to diagnose it on you. You press, 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 press. So you press. If you've not diagnosed one before, you see, it's as if you are touching an iron. And it's changed. Something is changed. New pains, new diseases, diagnosis, God forbid. You are crossing 70 with ease. You are crossing 70 with ease. Listen, you want to keep yourself alive, keep yourself in the purpose of God. Why God kept you alive. I come seeking fruit. Hmm. Sit down. Mark. The next one. How many points do you have in my camp meeting? Only three points. Oh, okay. You can choose how many you want. Mark 11 verse 11. Watch this. Watch this. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. When he had looked about on all things, now the even tide was come and he went out to Bethany and with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, Eve's, he came, if haply he might find anything Thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. Huh. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples had it. No man do what? Eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. You see, you take that for granted. People eating fruit from you. Isn't it? No man should eat fruit from you. Now verse 20. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. It means that if God speaks to you, you can dry up from your large intestines. You can dry up from your pancreas. You can dry up from your inner being. He said that the tree was dried up from the roots. My goodness. Kashito labati se and Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. Now, you see that Jesus didn't use the word curse. He used, the Bible used the word, he answered. Look at it. Verse 14, 13 and 14. When he came to the tree and he found no fruit, he wanted $5,000 from you. He wanted $10,000 from you just to help. Or he wanted a thousand. Or he just wanted a hundred. Or he wanted some, or he wanted you, the human being. And he couldn't get it. Only leaves. Only things we can't really use for much. Fig salad. For the time of figs was not yet. Some of you feel, oh, my time for fruitfulness has not yet come. But I want you to know that when God decides, hey, 
look, I need something from you now. So, oh, no, we, uh, we can do it uh, next year. Uh, but you know, you so we are, you know, we are, we do uh, 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 next year by this time, you know, are we okay? No, we don't. Really? Really? Listen to this, listen to the next verse. The next verse says, and Jesus answered. Jesus will answer your fruitlessness. He will have an answer for your emptiness. He will have an answer for your, re- he has a response to your dryness. He answered and said to it, he didn't curse it. But that answer is the curse. Nobody should eat from you again, even a tree. <sighs> a tree, he answered the tree. I want something small from you. It's become a very long discussion. You wouldn't give it. He answered it. He answered the tree. He answered the tree. He answered the tree. God is answering your emptiness. You you give nothing. You support with nothing. You do nothing. You give nothing. Your life, your time. You don't care about nobody. He answered it. He said, oh, really? Nothing at all? Okay. What you didn't want to do, may it never be done. Again. You didn't want to give thousand. May you never give thousand again. You didn't want to give thousand. You will never give thousand again. Hey, the implications are many. You, you didn't want to give five thousand. The implications are plenty. You, never, you will never give five thousand again. One day, one of church members was diagnosed. Actually, he just had a pain, little pain in the knee. He thought it was a normal knee pain. When he did the x-ray, I, I showed it to Dr. Go, I think. And we, he looked at it. He said, no. He, what is this? Who is this? I said, oh, this, this person. He said, no, 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 no. Because he's a specialist. I'm just nothing. When he looked at it, he said, no, no, no. Me. That was the end of him. Yes. That was the end of him. When the other doctors came in, I said, have this, this, this. They said, oh, apparently the knee. See, the knee, first they thought it was the knee. Then they found it's not the knee. It's, see, they didn't even know where it was from. Is it from the knee, from here, from the lung, from the brains, from wherever? I found where, where it's coming from. When this brother was dying, he called me. He said, you know, I have this money that I had planned to give to Healing Jesus Company. And I told him, no, no, no. You know why I'm remembering? I remember this where no man eats fruit of thee. Nobody give to, don't give to Healing Jesus Campaign again. Never give to Healing Jesus Campaign again. That, that's what he said. He didn't say, I curse you. Said, you never give again. And I said to him, no. I said, look. You need this money now more than ever. Because the diagnosis they've come up with and the treatments and what have you, oh, you can't, this is not the time for this. Don't think that you are cursed or there's some problem. No, 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 no. You know, he disobeyed me and still gave the money. Yeah. Listen, when God calls on you to give, to support, to preach, to release your husband, to preach, to release your wife to preach, or to do whatever service. Better. And say, oh, you don't want him to go. Okay. You will never have a husband to go anywhere again. He won't go anywhere again. You know what that would mean? That it, it could mean that he would even backslide and not even be a good husband again that he's even interested in preaching again. It could, that could be the how it would be. You wouldn't want your wife to do something. Oh, okay. You not said, you never let, what you said, you ne, it will never be again. No, no wife again to do whatever. You wouldn't want your child. Oh, you don't want your child. Oh, okay. You will never have any child to say, don't let your child 
it won't, it won't happen again. Because you're going to die. You're going to die on your birthday. And after that, that will be it. You won't even be around to say, don't go here. What are you going for this camp? But I'm having a camp with the children. You say they shouldn't come. Or you insidiously, obliquely prevent them from coming. Or you won't buy a ticket, $120 for them to come. You won't say, no, I don't have money. Meanwhile, you have. Listen, God is wild. Though. God is wild. I'll tell you a story. And this one was given by the man himself, not by the pastor. When the pastor was telling, he, he told us, he said, there's the, the church member's story. It's not my story. He said that the church wanted to expand and build a bigger church, get a new church. And they were going to take that information, that uh, project to the church board. You know, in every church, there are always some people that, like, they are the main supporters. Even here, there are some main supporters. Ask your neighbor, are you one of the main supporters or you are? <laughs> it's true. And the main supporter, he was one of the main supporters of this project. So, and you see, of course, when you, you know that this idea that is coming, I'm going to be called upon, I know. I know I've been in the church for years. As they've mentioned this project, they will call me very soon. Some of you on the front row, you feel, you feel that person, hey, this thing they are saying, they are going to call on me. True or not true? So you know what he did? When they went for the meeting, he shut down the idea. He said, it's a bad idea. This project is not a good thing. Bah, bah, bah. He gave various reasons. And the pastor said, the way the meeting was going, you know, there are these opinion leaders at meetings. They have a way of making the meeting go a certain way. You know, the other day I was at a meeting, there were only three, we were three in the committee. And it was me and somebody had the same idea versus the other, the third person who was on the committee. And this guy, I tell you, he managed to change wow. what the two of us had agreed on. You know, the way he was talking, I was saying, hey, committees are dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he managed to change it. Wow. Yeah. So the project didn't come on. Now, this businessman in America, this is an American pastor telling this story. He said that he was going to his new house that he had built up on a hill. Andre Crouch has a song, you got a house way up on a hill, something. Andre Crouch has that song, but this man was built this beautiful mansion. Now he was going with his two little daughters. Yes. So as they were going up the hill, shoo, his daughter said, Daddy, Daddy, can we have some ice cream? Daddy, can we have some ice cream? And he said, Daddy, girl, have some ice cream by all means. So he found the ice cream place and he stopped and, he, and the girls got out of the car. He said, careful when you are crossing the road, careful when you are crossing the road. So the girls crossed the road. As they were crossing the road, his two daughters, a 16-wheeler truck came from nowhere. This is the man, his own testimony. He was telling the people. Came from nowhere and cleared the, ch the children of the road. And the man started screaming in his car. He got out and started screaming. These are his words. He said, look, picking this from the floor on the, on the road, Screaming, and he said, As I was picking on the floor, I heard the voice of God. He said, And God said, You wouldn't build me a house, you shut down my project, but you build yourself a mansion. Go ahead and enjoy your mansion. Not this, is not the pastor's words, this is the man, the man who was picking up the pieces of his children. 
You know, money is one of the most spiritual things. And God expects of us to respect that money is very spiritual. And that he gave you what you have. Yes, if you have anything, he gave it to you. In fact, you should really respect God because you can stay here for years. And after 20 years, you see that you struggle to buy a ticket to go anywhere. And that's what I'm praying, that you listen carefully to the preaching, especially on the podcast, so that your life will be upgraded. And you will go above all these things that are in the system. Can I have an amen from somebody? So, God is saying to us, Jesus is saying, I've come to the tree. I expect fruits. Some of you expect you to preach. Some of you is expecting you to bring your, your friends. This little girl, this, she's Namibian. But she has so many Namibians. She brought all, saved them. They're all, they're plenty in the church. Yeah. There are expectations that God has for you. For you. As you are standing there seeing a man turning blue, then pink, then blue, then pink, then blue. God made you have, few people have seen somebody die before. A vision you will never forget till you die. You will never forget it. You think God hasn't got something that he's going to ask you about. Oh, then you don't know God. You think it's only relationships that people expect something. Oh, I thought you are my beloved, so I thought you would write. I thought you would say hello. I thought when I send a text, you, you would answer more than just saying, I see or wow or yeah or something. You know, you're expecting more. You're expecting things. You know, and God is saying, oh, it's not only human beings who expect. I also expect things. So, honestly... Years ago, I used to read this story about Jesus cursing the tree, and I thought it had no significance. But it is even more powerful to me as a story and a lesson than the story of even Jesus saying to the mountain, be thou removed. The fact that he cursed the tree when it didn't have fruit, when he wanted the fruit, the fact that he cursed it, uh, it's one of the most frightening things for me. Is that when God comes to you and says, I need this provision, oh, sorry, <laughs> too bad. You know, it's even embarrassing. Years ago, I, 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 I had a medical student who was a friend, you know, and I went to him to ask him to help the ministry. And I was, I mean, a very, very good friend. Very good friend. I didn't have supporters. I didn't have whatever. And I, just, I want to ask if you can give a donation of 50 pounds you know, his answer was, his answer was, because there are not many ways to give the answer. You know, his answer was no, no. He said no. And, I, and because if he was not my friend, I would not have asked him. But I said, oh, no, I, can, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't. You know, and I was in his house. You know, I didn't know how to let the time go quickly so that I, I would leave the house. <laughs> I never forget that day. 50 pounds. 50 pounds, like maybe what, $60 or something. Ah. He said no. You know, I, I, I checked the time to see how much time, how can I, how can I live quickly? I, I, I want to go quickly. I believe that God expects fruits from us. Some of you, he will never let you up. Ida has a song that says, you can't get away from your original calling. Cherish that. Your original calling will never change. Never. A thousand years can go by, it will not change. You can say whatever, 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 it will never change. You see, if you notice I'm preaching, if you like, go back and see. I'm, I'm surprised that this message has many different variations, eh? Because I preach obligations of Christians, ready at 20, why are you not a missionary? I mean, others, everything. Now, this is another one. Uh, I come seeking fruit. I mean, it's also in the Bible. You would think that this message will get finished. It's never that it's not getting finished. My calling to encourage people and challenge them 
to serve God and to bear fruit for God is still the same. The original calling is always there. That is it. I come seeking fruit. Okay, what do you think? True. True. For years I've been encouraging you to serve the Lord. Isn't it true? Very true. true. Yes. Is it not true? Very true, Bishop. Is it true? Very true, Bishop. Is it true? It's very true, Bishop. True? Very true. True? Very, very true. Everybody's going to say true, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask anybody else. Yeah. I come seeking fruit. I want a mega church. I want souls. I want growth. I want you to win people. I want you to do more. We had a camp here where we said we should start more churches. America something. Mission, Mission America. Mission America. It's like we should go out. Yes. And God is saying, I come seeking fruit. Never praise yourself. Oh, you see how many people come to get my praise? God is... Don't let me... (laughs) What a blessing. I come seeking fruit. Jesus walked up to the tree. 50 pounds. No. Oh. I'm sure the disciples were looking. I'm sure Jesus looked at the disciples and said, ah, the son of God. It's like, the tree has really swept you. And he looked at Peter and looked at John and said, I catch you. You will never, you will never be a tree again. You will embarrass me. You will embarrass me. You will embarrass me in front of my disciples. You embarrass me in front of my disciples? Today marks the beginning of great fruitfulness in your life. You must go away from this meeting saying, look, to sit down and do nothing and it's when you do nothing that you start getting all kinds of negative things. You know, I've been encouraging you more. Serve God. You've noticed a long time we even preach about loyalty. Just fo- focus on what we, the problems are out there. Why you, you start looking at me to criticize. What are you criticizing me for? I, I wonder what, why you'll be criticizing me. When we have so many souls to win, when you criticize me, how is it going to help us? Continents are waiting for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Beautiful. Beautiful. Is it not fantastic? fantastic. I come seeking fruits. Wow. Now, Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Adam knew his wife, and she bare who? Cain. Hey. Verse 2. Then she bare again his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep. Cain was a tiller of the ground. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought up the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Wow. And Abel, he also brought the wrestlings of his flock and of the fat. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, why are you wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? Why is thy countenance fallen? And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Verse 7. Beautiful. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Huh? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall 
be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Amen. Amen. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Wow. So doing well is coming back to the creator with some offering. And it's a real offering of life, blood. That's what God eats. God doesn't eat salad. And that is what Cain brought, salad. Listen, you can bring things, but it's not the real thing. It's true. How many have ever seen people spending money and realize that, hey, this guy can, has money. But when you're in church, you don't get the feeling that the person has money. It is easy, we see one of the ways to do things to God is to give him something, but not what he needs. But always to have something. That's a kind of a smoke screen to present to God. Oh Lord, I'm here, I'm here in church on Sunday. I'm here to mark my register. At least I came, didn't I? Amen. 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 I'm here at least, isn't it? Yeah. Nine o'clock, nine thirty, nine forty-five. Ah, I'm, I've, 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 I've done my work for God. You liar. You liar. You didn't. You didn't really care about church. You just. You just came to mark register. You came to mark your register. But your, your heart for God was less than 15%. You were not there in your mind and your heart. So let God touch your heart. Amen? Amen. And let us do for God what is real. You know, I tell you, you know, my wife, she likes hymns. Sometimes she can sing hymns for a long time. In the house. I don't mind. But you see, the Christianity that I was first introduced into had this, and it wasn't real to me. So it's because this music is always associated with an era of something in your life. So that music is associated with things that are not real. People that are serving God, but it's not real. People that are in church, but they don't know God. It's, it's associated with that. So even though they are beautiful hymns and really eternal and everlasting melodies and words, it, it, it just has that negative memory with me. Yeah. You know, because things that are not real. No, I, mean, I, I don't want religion. It's not real. I don't like. I don't like. You know, I want something real. Yeah. And I, I don't like people coming to the camp, you know, strolling around outside, chatting. I mean, this is, we, 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 we could actually go somewhere to have fun. We've done it in the church called Agabapto Fest. Yeah. You know, where we just go to have fun, maybe a bit of baptism for a couple of hours, and after that we have fun. That, that also exists. But this is not that. This is not a holiday. This is not a holiday. We are doing something. Yes. It's serious business. We are talking about real life issues. So, God is expecting us. Let's, let's be real because God can see right through our smoke screen. You know, there are people that are good at keeping up appearances. I mean, such people, you'll be, you'll be good to work in the Mossad or... Uh, 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 CIA or something because no one will ever know. <laughs> These bombers who bombed September 11th and so on, even their wives were shocked. They lived with their wives. Nobody knew what, what they were doing. Uh, this is what they were planning. Yes. I mean, they know how to do it. God, God is not interested in people who are not real. He wants real things. 
So let's either serve him fully, yes, or just do what is real to you, yes. I think a, a, a rich person who is trying to find a new wife will, will really struggle because he'll never know whether you love me or you love my money. Don't think so. That's why it's good to choose somebody when you are all nobody. Then we, we, we just move on together. Yeah, we just move on together and we keep moving on. We keep moving on. It's like we, we are all nothing. Yeah. Tell somebody, Jesus is looking for fruits from you. Amen. Amen. I come seeking fruits. Amen. Amen. Finally, 1 Samuel 25, verse number 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. And there was a man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep, 1,000 goats, and he was sharing sheep. Now, the name of that man was Nabal, and his wife was Abigail. She was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish or harsh and evil in his doing, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now, David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. And David sent out ten young men, and David said to the young men, Go to Carmel, go to Nabal, greet him in my name, and tell him, Say to him that liveth in prosperity. Say to him that liveth in prosperity. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be to all that thou hast. Now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we heard them not. You see, good things are often mild. It's like nothing is being done. Yeah. Neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, to thy servants, to thy son David. And David's young men came and they spoke to Nabal all these words. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David? <laughs> oh man, what are you talking about? Who is David? He's asking for my sheep. He's asking for my money. Are you joking? Is that why you came? Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Nonsense. Verse 11. Are you watching? Yes. Shall I take then my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? This is how Nabal talks. What are you talking about? Am I going to take the money that I have and you know how I do? <laughs> there are men that these days they wake up, we don't know where they are from. You see, all these are in the Bible. You see, you, you people, when he says, I come seeking fruit, David was now coming to ask for something. Look at his, he said, I, see, I come to you that are in prosperity. Huh? And thus you shall say to him that liveth in prosperity. Are you in prosperity here in America? Huh? I, I am going to give, I have, I have a meeting with some people. I'm going to give them a key. I always give, it, a, 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 give some keys wow. to prosperity. Yeah. 
I'll give, I'll give them the keys. Maybe they'll tell you, like, it, they'll, they'll seep it down the vineyard to come down to you, okay? Yeah. Huh. I see here the reward for hard work is more work. Was that last year? Yes. This year I come seeking fruit. <laughs> Have you noticed that it's always about working for God, isn't it? Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't message. God gave me the message. I'm bringing the message to you. Are you angry with God for giving you such a... Is it not a very good message? I mean, is it not a very, very, very good message? I come seeking fruit. I come seeking fruit. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Yes. I come seeking. I want something from you. Ah. And look at David. He said, I've come. I need some of your bread, your cows, your lambs. I want some. And what did he say? Who is David? Ah, 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 ah. Nonsense. Jacqueline, look at what he said. I can't say that there are stupid guys, foolish, I mean, no self may you. Verse 11. <laughs> Shall I take my bread and give it to men of whom I know not whence they be? Verse 12. So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all these sayings. Now what did David do? Eish. And David said unto his men, take everybody, take your sword. Everybody take your sword. <laughs> every, and they gathered every man and David also took his sword. Get your sword, we take your sword. And they went up 400 men. Yes. I mean, we, for one answer. One answer that who is David? <laughs> Challenge you people, be careful though. when you talk, if you talk the wrong way. Who is Bishop? Who is that? Who is that? Yes. Four hundred men coming after you in the spirit. Yes. Wow. Who is he? What is this? What does he think? Hey, do you know how hard we suffer here? Has he stayed in America before? Does he know the conditions that we are working under here? He just gets up and starts mentioning thousands of whatever. We don't have a disposable income here. <laughs> you know, I've been in the pastoral work for some years now. So I, I, I know how people talk and think. But I thank God I'm persuaded of better things from you. Amen. 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 Look, I just want to, if you've not understood any of my preaching, please understand that God is expecting something from you. I, mean, I, I think you can understand that God is expecting something from you. Yeah. And don't disappoint him. Yes, don't disappoint. He's expecting from you fruits. He's expecting people like, if you are from Zimbabwe, he's expecting to bring a lot of Zimbabweans. If you are Indian, he's expecting to bring a lot of Indians. If you are Jamaican, he's expecting to bring a lot of Jamaicans. If you are white, he's expecting you to bring a lot of white people. Until the church, you can't know which color the church is. As long as the color of a church can be determined, we have not yet reached where we are supposed to, to reach. It's true. It's true. You should never be able to see the color of a church as it grows. You say, oh, which color? Say, oh, it's a church. It's a church. When you go to heaven, you'll be surprised. God will give you a, a black man to marry or a white man to marry in heaven. <laughs> and you'll be thinking to yourself, hey! Your roommate, because maybe boys and girls will be roommates in heaven. He'll put you in, in a black dormitory or a white dormitory and you say, wow! <laughs> it's true. The boys and girls, you'll all be there together. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands. Say, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you 
for thinking of me, wanting something from me, looking in my direction, making a hedge around me, making a fence around me, protecting me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. I love you, Jesus. I thank you. You can ask me for anything. Ask me for anything. I will give you everything I have. Thank you, Lord. I give you my life. Take my life. Take my soul. Take my days. Take my moments. Take everything that I am and that I have. I love you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everybody standing, please. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. I want everybody to stand up. Because it's good to stand. It helps you to revive your muscles. Do you want your muscles to be revived? Revive your muscles. Beautiful. Now, Father, thank you for this great time of blessing you give to us. We love you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.